Now, Amnesty International, as you've been hearing this morning, is calling for an inquiry into undercover policing in Britain to be extended to Northern Ireland. It comes after the Scottish Justice Secretary asked the Home Secretary to reconsider extending the inquiry to police units in Scotland. Well, Jason Kirkpatrick is involved in the legal challenge to force that undercover policing inquiry to cover cases here. Good morning. Good morning. Just tell us why this is so important to you. You have some personal experience of this. Yes, unfortunately, I was targeted by a British undercover officer over the course of five years. Um, and what's come out is that it, you know, it wasn't about criminal activities. It, this was a political policing group of the London Metropolitan Police started in 1968 called the Special Demonstration Squad or SDS, and it's come out that these were police, police were spying on campaigning groups, um, at first anti-Vietnam war groups, yeah, uh, troops out movement, anti-apartheid groups, and in more recent years, environmental protests, and uh, also black uh, justice campaigners in London. So Theresa May decided in 2015 that there had to be a public inquiry to expose this. However, she excluded Northern Ireland from the inquiry. And you were involved in environmental campaigning. When did you find out that that you were the subject of, of, of undercover investigation? Yes, well, um, I'm an American, but I, I had moved to Delhi and then Belfast doing environmental campaigning uh, up through the early 2000s. And about that time, or in 2005, I met this undercover officer, Mark Kennedy, in Dublin. He traveled around with me and others. Uh, he paid for the trip. We drove from Dublin to the west of the Republic and then on up to Belfast giving lectures about uh, environmental issues and, and so forth. For example, in Belfast at the city church, across community church. And uh, I became his friend. We were very close friends, I thought, for five years. And then after five years, his activist girlfriend, who didn't know that he was an undercover cop, found a passport of his that had a different name. Mark had told us he was Mark Stone, but the passport said Mark Kennedy. And it all came out then in 2010. That must have been an absolutely... a huge shock. It, it was. Uh, I, I couldn't believe it when they told me because uh, Mark was the nicest guy. Like I said, we'd known each other for five years. We'd been out to the pub many times. We travelled uh, all across Ireland. We travelled to Northern Ireland. And uh, I was absolutely shocked when I got an email saying Mark uh, is exposed as an undercover cop. What kind of an effect did that have on you? At first I was really angry. I thought, how can this guy betray me? But then, then I thought quickly, well, okay, someone put him up to it, uh, the British state, and, and the guy was trained really well. It was simply one of the tactics that these police use to trick people into trusting them. For example, a tactic called mir- mirroring. So if this undercover cop wants to be my friend and says, oh, what kind of music do you like? And I say, I like country western. He says, oh, I like country western too. Or if you say, I like pop, uh, pop hits are my favorite, then he'll say the same. And he used these tricks. And um, so we became very close. He told me we're, we were good friends. He stayed at my home. I stayed at his. And um, over the course of five years, and I, I think I didn't know it's a big problem, but now I notice I really do have a hard time trusting people. And because I have to deal with this for seven years now to try to get justice to find out why this happened to me, I have a hard time sleeping sometimes, uh, constantly in the middle of my day, uh, thoughts drift off to this campaign. You know, we're thankful that Theresa May started an inquiry in England, uh, but that has to be extended to, to Northern Ireland. Why should access to justice stop at the border? Uh, your phone's just drifting in, in and out a little, right. Jason, but we'll try and persevere with it for another minute or two. Would you accept okay. that in some cases there is a place for undercover policing? Well, I think in general, people are thankful if there's a a violent, brutal murderer or, you know, some slavery issue going on and police find a culprit. That's great. And that's the problem. Why are police spending millions? In this case, it's millions and millions of pounds every year to target political activists. So, like I said, what I did was give public lectures at a church in Belfast and why someone in London is giving orders for an undercover cop based out of England to drive people like me around Dublin, giving public lectures, you know, paying all of our expenses. He paid for us to use his mobile phone. All of this is on the public dime, and I'd say that's resources that 
would definitely be spent somewhere else, you know. This is a part of a public inter- inquiry because Theresa May is angry about it. What do you hope would be achieved if they do extend this inquiry to Northern Ireland? Um, well, I think we need to get to the bottom of who's giving these orders and why, because, like I said, this campaign group has spied, uh, this, this um, undercover policing group has spied on anti-apartheid campaigners, environmentalists, Who's giving orders and why are they doing this? We, we had undercover cops sleeping with unwitting activists who didn't know that they were, in some cases, being used just to strengthen the credibility of these undercover cops. You know, the London Metropolitan Police have made apologies and paid out hundreds of thousands of pounds because it's wrong. It's, it's against the European um, Human Rights Convention. So who in the police, the London Metropolitan Police or the Home Office, who's giving the orders? That has to come out. Okay, Jason Kirkpatrick, thank you very much indeed for speaking to us this morning.